Hello again. And this is just going to be a quick follow-up video to the previous one where we looked at this multimeter. I want to add some more information and answer a few questions that have come up on forums and on YouTube. And first of all, I just want to look at the safety certificate for this multimeter. And I don't think it's going to be a fake certificate at all. It, coming from a company like Lidl, they just wouldn't put a fake certification on the box. But I want to go through the process just to show how to check up and make sure that when you see this sort of sticker that it's a real certificate. So, the first thing we need to see is that whenever you see a certification like this it should have underneath it the identification of that certificate. And in this case we've also got the website where we can check up to see if it's a real certification or not. And you get this uh, no matter what you buy, if it has one of these symbols, it should have a reference number as well. So for example, if we look at this Fluke multimeter, if we turn it over and look on the back, this is certified by Underwriters Laboratory, and at the side you get a listing number, so 950Z. So if you go to Underwriters Laboratory, you should be able to find a certificate for a Fluke 27 multimeter. But anyway, let's go back to this meter. We want to go to this website and look up that number. So here we have it. This is um, tooth.com. And we've got a page that tells us all about the GS mark, blah, blah, blah. And what we want is at the bottom of the page. We want the certification database. As we click there. there and we come to a page where we can type in the reference number which is 141 2732 found here. A digital multimeter model number PDN 300 B1. So let's check. We've got the meter here. Flip it over and the model number is printed here. PDN 300 B1. So this certificate belongs to this multimeter. And if we click here We can see the full details of the certificate. And the important part, come on, iPad, scroll down, what are you doing? Is first of all the model number, which we already checked, and here we see a list of the standards that this meter meets. And in this case we have a EN61010, which is the CAT rating standard. Okay, these are the it meets all of those parts of the standard and it gives us more information that um, two will go once a year here on an annual basis take meters from the production line and test them to make sure they still meet that standard and haven't been changed in any way and here it says this certificate expires automatically if there are any changes to the tested product. So they can't change the design of this meter in any way without invalidating the certificate. Okay, so that's what that's the, the process of checking up a safety certificate. And thanks to user Bitwelder for pointing this out. And another thing I forgot to mention is that in the manual on each of the specification ranges it also tells you the overload protection. So in the DC voltage range, overload protection 300 volts. And it's the same on every range. AC voltage 300 volts, DC current 300 volts, AC current 300 volts, resistance 300 volts, 
and the only one that doesn't say anything is the function generator and I can't imagine it, it would be different than the resistance range because it would come from the same part of the meter inside but it doesn't say anything here and when we tested the meter I did apply uh, 230 volts AC to the function generator and it survived just fine so I imagine it's the same even though it doesn't say it here in the manual so in general overload protection 300 volts this is stated in the manual so questions and the first question comes from user Joe Q Smith who has a YouTube channel which is very worth watching and he wants to know uh, if the fuses inside the meter have got any certification markings on them or any safety ratings apart from the, just the basic voltage and current so he wants to know if there's any kind of um, markings like certification on the fuses so let's get this taken apart and have a look Okay, here we have it. Let's just pop one of the fuses out and get it under the magnifier. Well, let's see if we can get it on camera first. Um, if I can get it in shot. So at the bottom we've got the voltage rating, which we saw last week. So it says 300 volts, 10 amps, this way up. 300 volts, 10 amps. And on the other end, I can just about see it. I don't know if it's going to focus. Probably isn't. Right about there. Is, if I'm not mistaken, the logo for Underwriters Laboratory. The same logo we saw on the back of the Fluke Multimeter. Okay, I'm fairly sure that's not going to come out on camera. So I'll take a picture of it and put it here. And apart from the logo, the only other markings on this fuse are, uh, it says here, HF which is high braking capacity, so it's a ceramic fuse type, basically, and F for fast blow. And I hope that answers your question, Joe. Let me know what you think. The next question, well, more sort of a doubt, was from YouTube user Darren Walker, and he was a bit worried about these input jacks, because they're just a piece of metal soldered directly to the PCB. And he thought that um, when we insert and remove the input jack, that this will put a lot of stress on there and uh, eventually break them. And you can see yeah, when I'm pushing the, the thing in, you can see that's lifting up and stressing the metal when I'm pushing the, uh, the lead in. But this might be okay if there's something in the back of the case sort of pushing down hard on that meat, that um, piece of metal and holding it in place okay so if there's something inside the case pressing down very hard there then it won't be a problem it can't actually move when I'm putting the, the lead in okay so if we take a look at the case we can see that in the back are three plastic discs which match up perfectly with the input jacks. Okay, so I've placed a bit of modeling clay on each of the jacks. And what I'll do is I'll get the back of the case, put it on, uh, put the screws in and see if it can how hard it presses down on each of these. OK, 
Okay. Well, we've definitely got a bit of a result. But it's definitely made contact. And if we look at this closely, look at it from the side, maybe, best view, you can see the clay is completely squished flat here. You can see it there, it's bare, barely. It's almost transparent. Get it on camera, come on. Uh, on this post here, you can see there, the clay is almost transparent. It's squashed it so thin, there's almost nothing left. And same here, and same here, same there. You can see how thin the piece that's left is. I think most of it came off on the back, but what's left is very thin indeed. And the same there. You can see it best from that angle, I think. So I think we can safely say that these con these <coughs> springs are being pressed down quite firmly by the back of the case. So really no worries, no worries about the design. I think they'll hold up quite well. And the final question, also from Darren, is where is this meter manufactured? Now, I've looked all over the back of the meter and it doesn't say anywhere where this meter was made. The only information here is that it's made by Targa GmbH, a German company, and it has a website. In the manual it says manufacturer. Targa GmbH, the same company as before, but that's only the manufacturer. It doesn't tell us where the meter was actually manufactured. See, this company could have a, a subsidiary in China, something like that. And the only clue I've been able to find is here on the PCB. If I can get this to focus, come on. If we look in the top corner of the PCB, it says here, all sun, with a little symbol in the middle. And if we go online, go to Google, search for all sun multimeters, you guessed it. We have allsun.com, and they are a Chinese manufacturer of multimeters. So, I hope that answers all your questions. And if you've got any more, let me know. Needle multimeter, thumbs up.